Coronary heart disease is a life-threatening disease, but the good news is, is that there are treatments for it. Today, we're going to look at the variety of these treatments and how they work. A great way to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmatheteachy.com. The heart pumps blood to all of our body's cells. It works very hard and requires lots of oxygen and glucose for its own cells. These are supplied by the coronary arteries, and you can see them here covering the heart. Sometimes the coronary arteries can become narrow, usually caused by a buildup of fatty deposits. This is called coronary heart disease, or CHD. This is dangerous because the fatty deposits restrict the blood flow to the heart. Less blood flow means less oxygen is being supplied, which can cause pain and even heart attacks. There are two methods of treatment for CHD. You need to be able to evaluate methods of treatment, so we'll discuss the benefits and risks as we go through them. The first method is stents. These are little mesh tubes that can be put inside the blocked artery where they then squash down the fatty deposit, opening the artery wider. They are left in place, allowing the blood vessel to work properly. The issues are that the stents can cause a risk of clotting after they've been put in. The second method is statins. These are a drug that lower blood cholesterol levels, slowing the buildup of fatty deposits. They don't unblock any blocked arteries, so they're generally only used for people who are at risk of CHD. Besides the main benefit of reducing the buildup, they also lower the risk of some other diseases. But as they are tablets, people need to remember to actually take them, and they're a little bit slower to have an effect. There are also some possible side effects that are quite serious. Now we'll take a look at some other cardiovascular diseases. In some people, the heart valves may become faulty, particularly in older people. This means they may not open fully, or they could be leaky. When this happens, the blood can flow in both directions, so that less oxygenated blood is pumped to the tissues of the body. This results in people feeling breathless or tired, as their cells aren't receiving enough oxygen for respiration. Without treatment, faulty valves can result in death. Fortunately, doctors can replace the faulty valves with either mechanical valves or biological valves. Mechanical valves are man-made, and the good news is that they last forever. The bad news is, is that patients will need to take medication to prevent any blood clotting forming around the valves. Biological valves, on the other hand, are valves from donors, so the patients don't need any medication, but they only last for around 10 to 15 years. Next up are pacemakers. In the last video about the heart, you will have learned that the natural pacemaker cells of the heart are in the right atrium, but sometimes these cells aren't functioning properly. They can make the heart beat too fast or too slow. In both cases, this causes problems. So if the heart is beating irregularly, an artificial pacemaker needs to be implanted into the chest. This is attached to the heart with two wires and then it can release an electrical signal which causes the heart to contract at the rate that is needed. These devices are tiny and life-saving. If a patient has heart failure, they may require a heart transplant or a heart and lungs transplant. This requires a donor heart, which isn't always available. Doctors may use an artificial heart to try and keep the patient alive until a donor heart is found. The big advantage of this is that it's less likely to be rejected by the patient's body, and of course, it prolongs their life. But it can cause the blood to stick and clot, leading to strokes. And to prevent this, the patient needs to take blood thinners, which have their own complications, like extended bleeding if they're in an accident. There's also a lot of machinery involved in keeping the artificial heart working. That means that patients need to stay in hospital until a donor heart is found. Natural heart transplants work a lot better and there's a much lower chance of the blood clotting. It also allows the patients to live a more normal life. But as with any organ transplant, 
there's a risk that the heart will be rejected, as the patient's body may detect it as foreign. All right, let's test what you've learned. Just pause the video and give the questions a go, and then press play when you want to mark them. Ready? One. Name the blood vessels affected in coronary heart disease. These are the coronary arteries. 2. Explain how they are affected and the impact of this on the heart. Well, the coronary arteries will have a buildup of fatty deposits. This reduces blood flow to the heart, which means less oxygenated blood is supplied, so the heart doesn't work as efficiently. And you could also expand and say that less respiration is able to take place. 3. Suggest one disadvantage of using mechanical valves to replace faulty heart valves. They can cause blood clotting around the valves, so the patient will need to take medication to prevent this. Ok, how did you do? Learn about how diseases interact in my next video. And if you're enjoying these videos and want more, please subscribe by hitting that red button below. Thank you for watching, bye!